In economics, we call individuals consumers. And while that's true, we all are consumers of things to some degree. The question is, why are we consuming more than we are creating? And could it be better for us if we became creators rather than consumers? Let's discuss. Welcome to episode 55 of The Graham Cochran Show, where I'm here to help you build your online business, help you work less, and help you live and give more. I'm your host, Graham Cochran. That's right, it's the show named after me. What can I say? I'm pumped to be spending some time with you today. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Um, We have been diving into a lot of practical stuff for how to start and grow and expand your online business during these crazy times. I think now is the best time we've had in many, many years to start and grow your business, and I hope you're doing that. Uh, I'm going to continue to point you to my 30-day online income jumpstart if you're like, I have no clue how to make money right now. I need to make money right now. I need to start my online business as fast as possible. Well, this is literally a four-week step-by-step checklist to go from no idea, no audience to making money in 30 days. It's free. I want you to have it. It's a simple PDF you can download. It's literally bullet points to check through. Okay, you don't have to do any heavy reading, but please download it and then implement it over these next four weeks. It's free at grahamcochran.com slash jumpstart. I'll put the link below if you're watching on YouTube. grahamcochran.com slash jumpstart. It's my gift to you as just a way to jumpstart your business and create an online income stream, which you and I desperately need during these crazy times. We need multiple streams of income, ideally, and having one online really, really helps when they close down the brick and mortar stores. You and I can still continue to make a living online, even if it's only a part-time living when everything goes to pot. So grab that for free, grahamcochran.com slash jumpstart. Today, I want to be a little bit more philosophical, though, and paint a picture for you of how to think about not just your business, because it relates to your business very directly, but to your life holistically. Um, This show is all about you building your online business. It's also about you working less, because I really am trying to attack the workaholism of our day, which we just call hustle. Um, but it's also about living more and giving more. And, and to live more means to create more than you consume. What does that mean? Well, I want to break that down today. This is, is something that's really important to me. And it's something that I'm, I hope, I hope I'm doing a good job. I don't know how well I'm doing, but I hope to, over the next few years, continue to instill in my own kids. I want my daughter's to not just be consumers, but I want them to be creators. And they are creators in a lot of ways, but I want to expand their view of what a creator can be and what does it mean to create. But first, let's talk about some grim statistics, right? We're consumers. Yeah, we buy stuff. When you think about economics, we we, we buy things. We, we spur the economy along by spending money. But I just mean not even that. We consume media like crazy. Uh, we always have loved entertainment as a species, and I think entertainment's great. I mean, people have been doing plays and theater and acting and storytelling for, since the dawn of time. Entertainment is beautiful, right? Even Jesus taught his disciples and followers through stories a lot of times because it was a way to really drive a point home. It was educational, but he used the power of storytelling in his parables. So, Entertainment by itself is a wonderful thing, not a bad thing. What is fascinating is that in our modern day and age, and especially right now in the midst of this pandemic, we are consuming more entertainment than ever before. And it's really sad because I really think this should be the time we create more than ever before. But let's look at the numbers because they're interesting. 2017. We're going back three years. In 2017 alone, one year alone, an average U.S. consumer, there's that word, spent 238 minutes a day. That's three hours, 58 minutes. Four hours a day watching TV. The average American 
in 2017 spent four hours a day watching TV. According to a Nielsen report, United States adults are watching five hours and four minutes of television per day on average now. That's 35.5 hours a week dedicated to TV watching. That's slightly more than 77 days per year, according to this report. That's bananas. I mean, how much Tiger King can you watch? That's that's insane. Four to five hours a day of TV watching. I I don't even okay. I I can be I can be snooty to TV watchers. That's fine. What about something that Graham really cares about, or at least used to? Video games. I used to be a manager of a GameStop. Did you know that? I was what they called third key. It's not the manager, not the assistant manager, but the third key manager. That's right. I was a boss at a video game store. Video gamers spend an average of 5.96 hours each week. They spend six hours a week playing video games. 20% play for an hour or less each week. So you got people on, you got a fifth of video gamers just play ever so lightly, right? Just an hour a week, right? Um, 36 0.2% play between one and four hours a day. So that's pretty regular. And then get this, 26.8%, over a quarter of video gamers play seven or more hours a day. Oh man, I used to work with a guy um, who was from Japan and we had a, a fondness, we shared a fondness for a few specific video games. And in one of our conversations about video games, he said that a kid he went to university with in Japan dropped out of school um, because he was playing video games. Let me get my math right. 22 hours a day. He would sleep two hours a day, and then he never left his apartment, never went to school, never went to work. He just played these online games, these sort of open-ended games, right, where you're in these universes where there's no end to the game. You just can keep playing 22 hours a day. But a quarter of video games are playing seven or more hours a day where the average is six hours a week, so just under an hour a day. Video gamers. And lest, lest you're so snobbish that you're like, I don't watch TV. I don't play video games. Do you have a smartphone? Ooh, I had to go there to the phone because it affects us all. According to research from Rescue Time, which was uh, one of the original apps on Android and iOS for measuring screen time before Apple introduced their own screen time app. Um, so they have a ton of data over m much, much phone usage. They say, Rescue Time says, people generally spend an average of three hours and 15 minutes on their phones every day. Three hours and 15 minutes a day on their phones. With the top 20% of smartphone users spending upwards of four and a half hours. And this makes sense, right? You spend a little bit of time on social media, maybe a lot. You watch a couple of YouTube videos. You email with it. You buy something on Amazon with it. You check your calendar. I mean, the phone is a tool that has many purposes, right? We use for lots of different things. So it's hard to just attack phone usage at large. Like I shared with you a few weeks ago, I quit social media for a whole year. And so I haven't been on it since uh, March, um, the end of March. And that was a personal decision, partly because of the time wasted, but partly because it just social media. I have my own issues with social media. If you want to know more, there's five reasons why I quit social media for a year. You can go watch that episode but or listen to that episode. Um, but it's not just social media, right? Like I use my phone for a lot of different things. Um, there's a lot of helpful apps. Uh, we might use it for exercise, right? We might use it for um, even for work. You can use it to do work orders or snap pictures of things. That, like, I mean, there's a million things we use our phone for. But the point is, it is something that is consuming our time as we consume things on it. And a lot of what we consume on our phones 
is entertainment. We're scrolling through news feeds. We're scrolling through social media. We're scrolling through the latest recommended YouTube video. I used to make fun of YouTube, people that would watch YouTube. I've been making YouTube videos for over a decade, but I used to make fun of people that just watched YouTube for fun. And then when the latest Star Wars movie started to come out and YouTubers de- dedicated themselves to Star Wars theories and, and you know, leaks from the movies, like I, I found myself becoming one of those people. I was like, dang it. I became one of those YouTuber people that just crush YouTube videos because I just want to know more and more and more and more and more. So whether it's four hours a day on TV, four hours a day, three to four hours a day on your phones, or one to seven hours a day on your video games, these three things alone are turning us into consumers where we have no time for anything. I don't have time to run a business, Graham. Hmm. I don't have time to start something online. I've already got a job. I've got a family. I've got to watch three and a half hours of TV a day. Dude, I love watching some football. Can't wait for football to come back whenever sports can come back. Can't wait to watch a football game for three hours and be a part of that statistic. But I can't do that every day. I could barely do that a whole season. So I think numbers are fascinating. Um, We consume a lot. I posit to you that you will be better off if you shift some, just some, I'm not against TV, video games, or the phone. I enjoy all three. Shift some of your consumptive behavior and some of your consumptive hours a week from those three platforms and shift them over to creating. Creating what, Graham? Well, this is a business show. So creating content for your online business, creating products. Last week we talked about about a mini course, creating a mini course, creating a YouTube live, creating a webinar, creating um, updates to your products. Creating, 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 create some kind of content. Creating could also just be art. I'm an artist. I'm a musician, right? Write a song. Record a song. My wife's a photographer. Take pictures just because. My Both of my daughters are artists, and, and they love to paint and color and take old Amazon boxes and turn them into crafts. My daughters like to make clips videos. Instead of watching videos, they're not allowed to watch videos on, on a device, but they make their own videos. And my, my oldest has gotten really good at being an art director, cinematographer, editor, actress, singer. So she stars in these little movies and she sets up the shots and she cuts them together. She has done the most creative stuff that I never thought possible. She hasn't learned how to do this from YouTube. She hasn't watched the documentary on how to be a filmmaker for a kid. She just grabbed an old iPhone I had that had the Clips app, which is like a really easy to use iMovie. And she just started playing with it. And over a year or two of playing with it, she's gotten really good at creating something. And she finds a lot of enjoyment in doing this. So creating can be a lot of different things. But what I want to do real quick in this episode is share four reasons why you should create more than you consume. Compelling reasons. I think that if you're already agreeing with me and nodding your head, this will just put you over the edge. And if you've got your you know, arms crossed and like, I don't know what you're talking about, Graham. You're just, you're just bagging on me with my phone usage. You're just bagging on me because I like to play video games. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I love me some video games. I love my phone. I love TV and movies and sports. Um, I'm not holier than thou. I'm just, those are just the numbers in America, but I really do love creating more than I love consuming. And here's four compelling reasons why. Number one, you could have guessed this, being a creator more than a consumer means you can grow your income. I mean, my 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 livelihood my income has just shot up over the decade that i've been doing business um almost 11 years now why not because i consumed a bunch of other people's content consumed a bunch of other people's courses although i have taken courses and learned from people and i've i've been coached and i've gone to live events i'm not against learning so i'm not saying i did it all by myself but there's a little bit of consumption but a ton of creating you might be one of those people that has bought every person's course. You might be subscribed to everyone's YouTube channel, on everyone's podcast, on everyone's email list. You know all the people and have consumed all the content, but you don't have anything to show for it. I know people like you. 
You're smart. You want to get good at it. You're not cocky. You're humble enough to learn. You might even be one of my students. But if you're consuming online content, video content, training, book after book, course after course, podcast after podcast, but you have not created your own content for your own business, you're missing the point of it all. Consume so that you can create. And then create in large proportion way more than you consume. Fortune favors the content creators. Just made that up, but it's true. Fortune does not favor the content consumers. The people who make money online are generally the people who create the most and best content online. Be prolific. Be prolific. Make a ton of great content. Now is the time. Make a ton of great content. Create, create, create. You should be making more video than you consume. If you consume a lot of video, that might mean you need to cut back on your consumption, and it also might mean you need to create more on the production side of things, but create more content because it will grow your business. I promise you, both free and paid. Paid is more logical and obvious, right? The more products you create, the more things you have to sell. Free is not as obvious if you're not you know, um, a wily old vet and you're new to this whole online space. The way we grow our brand is we create content. It's called content marketing. You don't need to run Facebook ads. You need to create more free content so that your brand can be discovered and it's searchable and you show up when more keywords are typed in, you show up everywhere. I've, I have colleagues in the audio space who joke on me, Graham, I can't go anywhere on YouTube and not see your face when I type in anything about music or recording. And there's a reason for that. I've been pumping out videos for over a decade on that platform. Content gets your name out there, which allows you to grow your audience and eventually pitch your product. So my income has grown as my content has grown, as my audience has grown. There's a reason why. They're all interconnected. So that's reason number one to create more than you consume. It will grow your income. And that's probably what you're here for, right? Number two, Creating more than you consume. Creating can help keep your brain healthy. Now, I am not a scientist, and there's a lot of studies we could do on brain health when you create. I didn't actually want to go there. When I think of this, actually where my mind goes is retirement. Now, there are a lot of different studies on what happens to retirees when they retire in terms of their health. Um, but I have heard from multiple studies, and I'm just going to pull one right here just for the sake of time, but I've heard from multiple studies, and it makes sense to me that the earlier you retire, the more likely you are to die sooner. Now, there's a lot of variations in the study. There's a very famous Harvard study done on this. There's one uh, that Shell, a study was done on Shell and oil employees, right? So the oil company. And it shows that people who retire at age 55 and live to be at least 65, die sooner than people who retire at 65. I'll read that again. This is the first part. People who retired at 55 and live to be at least 65 die sooner than their counterparts who wait till they're 65 to retire. After age 65, the early retirees, the people who retired at 55, have a 37% higher risk of death than counterparts that retired at 65. So even if they make it past 65, they're 37% higher at risk to die than those who didn't retire until 65. That's not all. People who retire at 55 are 89% more likely to die in the 10 years after retirement than those who retire at 65. That one is crazy. I'll say that again. People who retired at 55 are 89% more likely to die within the first 10 years of their retirement than their counterparts who waited till they're 65 to retire. What does that tell us? A lot of things. When you work, there is social interaction a lot of times, unless you're me. <laughs> I'm all by myself. Ah, help me. <laughs> there's social interaction. Uh, when you work, there's a sense of purpose. And that's really what I'm thinking of. When you work, there's a sense of purpose. Why? Because you're creating. Every job, every business, you are creating something. You're creating order out of chaos. You're creating reports. You're 
creating a clean environment, you're creating products or services, you're creating sales copy, you're creating a vision for your employees. Whatever you do for a living, substitute that verb and put in the word create. There is a way to look at what you do as being creative and creating something. When you are in a creative posture, when you are working, you aren't consuming. It's literally Work is literally the opposite of consumption. It is output. And that stimulates our brain. And the more you stimulate your brain, especially later in your life, the more your brain reacts. Your brain is, and I'm not a scientist. I don't have to be one to see that this to be true. So I'm sure if you're a scientist, you know way more about this and are more convinced than I am. Your brain is a fascinating and powerful and super smart entity. If you use it and work it, it grows and responds. If you don't use it and don't work it, it shuts down. It doesn't need to operate at a high capacity. It is an efficient tool. God gave us brains and gave us bodies and gave us the purpose of work so that we would be healthy. It is this beautiful cycle when you're creating and creating and creating, you have a sense of purpose and your brain is having to think, you're having to think of others, you're having to bring something to completion. All of that keeps your brain healthy, which keeps you living longer. And I'm sure there are better studies and more studies to be done. If you have any, share them below on YouTube if you're watching. But man, being a creator more than a consumer, when I think about the worst retiree situation imaginable, I picture myself sitting on a recliner watching TV, drinking a Bud Light, which would be really depressing because that's not really good beer. You know what I'm saying? You sit there and you consume. Um, now, there are a lot of reasons why you might be forced into early retirement. That's happening, and I'm sure will happen even in this economic climate. So I'm not trying to make light of if you had to retire, but if you had to retire, still you can be a creator more than you are a consumer. You don't need to then default to sitting on the couch and watching TV or watching YouTube or scrolling through the news aimlessly on your phone. You can be a creator. You can volunteer your time. The world needs a lot of volunteers right now. I've been blown away by the number of nurse practitioner and medical staff and doctors who are volunteering in the hardest hit areas with this virus and this disease. So many people stepping up to the plate. You can volunteer and basically do the same activity as work. Guess what? You just don't get paid. But if you don't have an opportunity to work and can't get paid anyway, why don't you just volunteer and stay useful? You can dive in with your family, help your grandkids or help your children. You can start a business. I have a lot of retirees that are starting businesses now. You can create music and the art and the literature that you wanted to create when you were young and busy and working hard. I have so many people that follow my Recording Revolution stuff who are just now in their 70s creating home studios and writing and recording the music they always wanted to because they have time. Those are retirees who are gonna live long because they're creating something. They're not just consuming. They're not just listening to music or watching movies. They're actually writing music themselves and creating. Keeps your brain healthy. Number three, reason to create more than you consume. It's more fun. It's more fun. I like consuming. I like watching movies a lot and I find them to be fun. Um, I like playing video games and they're fun. And I like messing around on my phone, that's fun. But it is actually more fun to do what I'm doing right now. To speak to you is more fun. I get an adrenaline rush when I have a, an idea for a video, when I have an idea for a podcast, when I, I have an adrenaline rush right now when the camera's on, the microphone's on, and I'm able to just go. I have an adrenaline rush when it's uploaded and it goes live and you can watch it and I start to see engagement. It is fun. It is satisfying. It feels good. It's not work to me. Now, sometimes if the days get busy or sometimes if I have other little things on my task list to do that butt up against the content creation, then it starts to feel like work. But nine times out of 10, it doesn't feel like work. Sitting in a cubicle trying to sell radio advertising to small businesses in a little podunk town, that felt like work. This feels like play. 
and it's fun to create. Creating at its core is playing, and playing at its core is an integral part of the human experience. So it is more fun. And finally, fourth reason to create more than you consume, and this is where we get all gushy, it makes the world a better place, right? I know the song is what the world needs now is love, sweet love. What the world needs now is creators. More than ever, yes, we need love. But I think one of the best ways to love is to create. So they're one and the same. The world right now needs you to innovate. It needs you to create. That could be as simple as writing a song that encourages somebody. That could be as simple as writing a blog post that teaches something and and educates. That could be as simple as making a video that's funny for others to consume. Um, It could be as simple as creating a really funny meme. But be on the creating side, not just the consuming side. There's nothing wrong with being a consumer, but create more than you consume. We need right now, more than ever, people to create practical things like a vaccine for this disease, this virus. We need people to create innovative economic stimulation procedures to get our economies back and going. We need people to create opportunity, economic opportunity for those who have been marginalized. And that has always been the case, even before this crisis. But we were all too busy making money just a few short months ago to notice those that are in dire need. We need to create economic opportunity for the most marginalized in our society. We need to create better forms of government. We need to create um, better education for our children. I believe in education wholeheartedly. um, But I see the brokenness in the school systems, and it's different depending where you live and what school you're in. But we need people to innovate there and create better better environments for learning and better models of education. We need people to create more sustainable business models that are sustainable for not just the business, but for the employees and for the world at large. We need you to create. In your topic or niche, if you're an information product person like me, we need your voice. We need your opinion. We need your perspective. We need your personality. Create something. Create content. Share it with us. We need it. That is how you love your neighbor. Right? As a Christian, I've talked about this before. As a Christian, the greatest commandment, Jesus says when he's asked, is to love God. And the second, he sneaks in, is like it to love your neighbor as yourself. Now, neighbor love looks like a lot of different things. It is, It encompasses many aspects. But I believe one of the greatest ways to show neighbor love is to build a business that serves a certain group of people. So more than ever, the world needs you and your neighbor, and that word expands to the globe because of the power of the internet. Your fellow humans need you to build your business, commit to your business, and serve their needs. Innovate, solve problems, get results for them. For them. You will be rewarded, so don't worry about that. You will be compensated. The businesses that serve the most, give the most, that are others-focused the most, prosper economically. You don't have to worry about that, right? You can monetize the business, and you'll do fine. In fact, you will blow up because you are serving others. So yes, you will benefit, But this is how we make the world literally a better place. If we all become creators more than we are consumers. There is so much untapped potential and talent and knowledge and energy and creativity just sitting on couches right now, just watching TV. And again, I'm not coming down on TV. Otherwise, I'd be a hypocrite. I'm not coming down on video games. Otherwise, I'd be a hypocrite. I'm not coming down on phone usage. Otherwise, I'd be a hypocrite but in moderation, right? Scale back maybe one hour a day from all three of those things combined. And you could free up seven hours a week that you could devote to something that would be neighbor-loving, world-bettering, brain-stimulating, joy-inducing creativity. 
that's what I want for you. That's what I want for myself. I can't change the world completely from behind a microphone, but if I can inspire you to be a creator and to build and share what only you can build and share, then I will have done my job, at least one of my jobs. So if you are on the beginning of this creation journey and you're like, Graham, I don't know what I would create. Graham, I don't know how to reach people online. Graham, I don't know what anybody would want to listen to me say. Then I have a framework for you that will help you. It's my 30-day online income jumpstart guide. In this guide, I break it down into four-week increments. Week one and two, I explain how to find an audience, what to do with that audience, and how to figure out what you personally should be sharing with that audience. That's the focus of weeks one and two. Week three is all about transitioning into putting together a paid offering based off of what you've learned and done in week one and two. And week four is actually pitching and launching that paid offering so that by the end of week four, you make your first sale, which is 30 days from now. It is step-by-step. I hold your hand. I give you specific instruction. It's a free guide you need to have. You might as well download it because it will help you out tremendously and point you in the right direction. Will you create the most perfect thing in 30 days? No. My first four courses, I think, were like, okay at best. But that's how you learn. And you can still make money and you can still serve people. You can still become a creator rather than just a consumer. Right now, you are in consumption mode. And I'm grateful for that. You're smart. You're educating yourself. You're at least not looking at cat memes, right? And you could be doing that. But you are consuming. Great. Take this moment that we just shared together that you've been consuming And don't let it stop there. Plant it in the ground as a seed and let it grow up into become a lot of fruit where you're creating a ton. You took one podcast episode, one video on YouTube, and turn it and expand it into helping a ton of other people. That's how this thing really picks up. So download that guide for free at grahamcochran.com slash jumpstart. It's my 30-day online income jumpstart guide. Links below if you're watching on YouTube. Otherwise, go to grahamcochran.com slash jumpstart jumpstart. Thanks for listening. Thanks for supporting the show. Thanks for leaving your feedback and review on Apple Podcast. Thanks for liking the video and subscribing on YouTube. It means a ton and helps me out with the algorithm. But more importantly, just thanks for your time. If you stuck around to the end, it means that you really, really are dialed in. And I don't take that lightly. I really, really care about your success. And the fact that you're listening is an honor to me. And I I don't want to uh, take that lightly. So please take my thanks. Appreciate you. Stay safe. Stay well. I'll see you on another episode real soon.